Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Tonight on Our News, alleged cases of abuse at a children's home under investigation. The body of a 19-year-old woman found on a dirt road. Plus, Bahamians in Washington shared their American experience. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, a disturbing video has prompted officials to launch an investigation into the alleged abuse of multiple children at a local children's home. Social Services Minister Frankie Campbell addressing the matter outside cabinet this morning. Jasmine Brown reports. The social services minister spoke to the issue the morning after an undated video went viral on social media showing children being beaten. He said he was alerted to the video on Monday night and immediately ordered an investigation. That investigation commences this morning. I want to make it clear that in no way, form or fashion do we support any form of abuse against children, adults, girls, boys, women, no form of violence or abuse. The incident is purported to have happened at the Bahamas Children's Emergency Hostel on McKinney Drive. In the video, multiple children were beaten with what appears to be a stick. The children were lined up one by one to receive their punishment. It is unclear why the children were beaten. Other children and adults watched as the scene unfolded. There is a distinct difference between discipline and abuse and we draw the line there. Although the video had no sound, several children appeared to cry out as they were struck. Some dropped to the ground. A few minutes into the video, a few more adults joined in. Several women were seen holding children down as they were beaten. A woman in a wheelchair also beat a child as another attempted to hold that child still. Only the home's administrator is authorized to beat the children according to the hostel's policy. Campbell, who says the matter was brought to his attention, sought to assure the public that the investigation will be impartial. I want to assure you that we will leave no stone unturned and we will let the chips fall where they may. He says the government is working to draft a management agreement for all children's homes, including the ones that are not operated by the state. This matter would be properly investigated. It will be impartially investigated. I've spoken to the chairman of the board at the Children's Emergency Hostel, and we are on the same page. Campbell said the results of the investigation will be made public. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, the family of a 19-year-old woman who was found beaten to death on a dirt road on Monday is heartbroken by her murder. Relatives describing the young woman as family-oriented, happy, and outgoing. This as the search continues for her missing vehicle. Jared Higgs has that. Family members say this video of 19-year-old Candy Celia Perlene Smith affectionately called Pearl, shows her fun and playful side. They were horrified when they learned that her life had been taken. Police received reports shortly after 4 p.m. that the body of a female was found unresponsive on a vacant property situated South Creek close off Marshall Road. Police press liaison ASP Audley Peters says a passerby discovered Smith's body. They were directed to the northwestern portion of the property where they found the body of a female lying on the ground with blunt force trauma injuries sustained to the head. Smith's mother, Ataya Carey, described her daughter as an outgoing and fun person. She says she was helpful and would give you her heart if she could. The grieving mother says her last conversation with her daughter was at around 1.15 on Monday afternoon and was about picking her up to run an errand. Another family member described her as untapped, happy, family-oriented, and an excellent athlete. She was also a lover of dirt and motorbikes. It's a possibility that it may be domestic based on the evidence that is lying around. Smith's mother also says her Burgundy 2012 Honda Civic is missing. Its license plate number is AS7431. The vehicle is a four-door and has a black bumper. Carrie says her daughter left home driving the car on Monday morning at 9.30. If you see the vehicle, you should contact police immediately. Peter says while police are following promising leads, they still want members of the public to speak up. 
based on what the investigators suggesting, they are following a lead at the moment, but we, want to, we still want to depend on members of the public who may get, have some information in respect to this to contact us. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. A member of parliament has filed an assault complaint with the Royal Bahamas Police Force, which also reportedly received a counter complaint from the MP's wife. Bethany McDermott has the details. Police Commissioner Paul Rowe has confirmed that South and Central Eleuther MP Hank Johnson has filed a complaint to police alleging that he was assaulted by a male relative of his wife while visiting a female friend in Coral Harbor. According to Rowe, the male relative was charged for causing harm and is on police bail. He also confirmed that Johnson's wife filed a counter complaint of assault against him, which Rowe said is under investigation. The Road Traffic Authority chairman reportedly suffered visible injuries after the reported incident. Now we also put the question to the FNM chairman who said he had no comment. However, he did give the assurance that the party leader will handle the situation once police are done with their investigation. Well, it's a private matter and at the end of the day, Whatever the, the, the outcome is, uh, I'm sure the leader and uh, the, the leadership of the party will address whatever it is. He made it clear that the FNM is a party that addresses its issues head on. We and the FNM do not ignore or, or shun away from anything. We address any issues that, that come to our party. And at the end of the day, we are about um, presenting what we, we practice, what we preach. Johnson is a first-term MP who won his seat on the FNM ticket with 50% of the vote. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. In other news, the Christian Council president is shutting down criticism after he attended the funeral of Leone Wallace, which had a large crowd surpassing the number of attendees permitted under the emergency order. Giorgio Bain reports. The funeral service, which was streamed live from the church's Facebook page, begins with a band-led processional. Dozens of persons poured in and made their way around the gravesite. The funeral service of Leonie Wallace, the wife of Voice of Deliverance Disciples Center senior pastor Leon Wallace, was held at Woodlawn Gardens on Sunday. Fernando was present and spoke at the funeral. The current emergency order stipulate that no more than 10 people, excluding the officiant and mortuary workers, should be in attendance at graveside services on New Providence. Despite COVID-19 protocols, Fernandez says large crowds at funerals are nothing new, and with everyone present wearing a mask, he doesn't see the harm. I have been to go to graveyards. Every graveyard in this country I've been to, and I've seen crowds that I shirked at, and I said, wow, this is way over the number. So let's, let's not pretend like this is the only one. So I believe that some people are following the order, and some people are not. But what you cannot do is control people just pouring into a graveyard. Um, for a funeral that they want to be a part of. And so we've got to look reasonably at what can be done, what's the safe method to do, and get it done. Let's just not do rules for rules' sake. In an interview with the Nassau Guardian, Wallace said that no special provisions were made for his wife's funeral by the competent authority and that despite the large crowd, only 10 close family members were invited. Asked why he has not spoken out against large crowds as the Christian Council president, Fernando says he cannot allow himself to be a hypocrite. So maybe my silence speaks volumes, that there needs to be some adjustments to the rules. And I can't uh, be a hypocrite and stand here and say that, that 10 persons at the grave said, I buried my father with 10 persons. I'm talking about a full military funeral, lifting casket, the whole life. It was awful. And so I cannot, as the Christian Council President, say that I can do on 10 persons at a graveside. Fernandez says the restrictions surrounding funerals have been in place too long, and with cases now lower, he sees no reason why they should remain in place. But what it says is we need to look at this again. Uh, I think it's time for the Office of the Prime Minister uh, to look at memorials and funerals and make a decision that we can open it, especially since the numbers are low. This is the time to give some relief to the country. Uh, right now, it's, it's rebellion uh, that the society is saying that we want to bury our dead. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie Bain. Well, some clouds outside our Robinson Road studios tonight. Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the details. Greg? Thanks, Christina. I'm meteorologist Greg Thompson with your first look at weather. Beautiful conditions outside our studios. Under partly cloudy skies, temperatures are in the mid-70s. 74 is our current temperature. Your winds are still light out of the northeast at 7 knots. Feels like temperature still in the mid-70s. Across our area, satellite view. Beautiful conditions across most of the Bahamas, the exception being the southeast Bahamas. There's a frontal boundary still existing down there, so some clouds, isolated showers possible in that location, but all in all, very nice conditions expected through the rest of the evening. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come.
Thanks, Greg. Still to come, what it's like to be a Bahamian in Washington, D.C. Plus, the national security minister says there's no proof the pandemic put a dent in crime. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. All eyes on Washington, D.C. tomorrow for the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. But this transfer of power comes amidst chaos and uncertainty brought on by a global pandemic and political unrest. Jerome Sawyer is in Washington, D.C. tonight talking to some Bahamians who are in the midst of it all. Jerome? Well, Christina, we are about 12 hours out from the start of the inauguration of the 46th President of the United States, Joe Biden. Unfortunately, the threat of violence and coronavirus has kept hundreds of thousands of spectators away, among them many Bahamians who are intimately involved in this very American process. Brought to you by Solomons, where it's easy to be your best. Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia are home to hundreds, if not thousands, of Bahamians. Some born and raised in the Bahamas but migrated here. Others come from Bahamian roots, spending formidable years with family. They represent possibly one of the largest and most diverse Bahamian diaspora populations. No doubt the events of January 6 changed the face of America and for the Bahamians who live here as well. LaVar Monroe is a professional artist who operates a Baltimore studio just outside of D.C. proper. He says January 6th proved what people of color in America already knew. Historically, this has been the story of America. This has been the story of colon um, the colonial past that we all share. So this is not new to us. Now, is there a resolution? No time, not in my lifetime. I can guarantee you not in my lifetime. Aisha Bo is an aerospace engineer, former NASA engineer, and founder and CEO of STEM Board. Her view, pretty much the same. There's nothing that I'm seeing that isn't a surprise. In some ways, I feel like it's slightly underwhelming because you're constantly watching individuals express shock over situations we, within the minority community, have expressed time and time again that have been in existence. LaVar believes the last four years have already shown the world what has existed in America for hundreds of years. This whole Trump thing and political thing has really shown us what America is. Because during Obama's time, in my opinion, this is the real change. He lasted eight years after that, and here comes Trump. Then the real America comes out. You know, the Proud Boys and this and that. And I really don't want to get into the political thing, but yeah. But now we're seeing the face of America. This is the face of America we're seeing now. Aisha is, however, worried that it will be business as usual soon after the inauguration. There's a tendency for things to lose importance after a news cycle. For me, I'm seeing that you have a lot of individuals who have raised valid concerns about the reflection of opportunity, of liberty in the United States. And those concerns should be addressed. We can no longer be asymmetric in our response to one group versus another group without there being a level of accountability. We're seeing that now because people are realizing that their vote matters. Brought to you by Solomons, where it's easy to be your best. Jerome, go. 
Well, just to give you just to give you an idea of the security around the Capitol, it represents about five square miles of security around the area where the inauguration is taking place. Now, that only represents about seven percent of the area uh, that needs to be cordoned off. That does not represent the rest of the city. There is concern tonight that those vulnerable areas uh, may be under attack in some way tomorrow. But we're all hoping and praying that everything goes according to plan and it is a smooth quiet day as it has been up to this point uh, but there are 25,000 National Guard troops on the ground ready to respond at a moment's notice for now we're live in Washington DC I'm Jerome Sawyer reporting live for our news thanks Jerome stay safe and we are looking forward to your coverage tomorrow evening well, National Security Minister Marvin Dame says the double-digit drop in crime last year is something to be celebrated. This as he brushed off claims that COVID-19 restrictions are behind the significant decrease. Jasmine Brown has that. The National Security Minister backed up comments made by the Commissioner of Police yesterday as he also insisted there is no proof that the pandemic put a dent in crime. COVID didn't get changed someone's mindset. If someone is held bent on committing crime, you think a curfew going to change that? That person will wait it in the cover of darkness, right within their own community, take some back road and commit a crime. Dame's comments came a day after the commissioner of police said this when asked about this 16% drop in crime during a press conference on Monday. Y'all got to give us the credit because we have done a whole lot. When crime go up, we take responsibility. So the least that the people could do is credit us when, when we get a reduction. So the work, I mean, I commend the officers for the work that they have done and continue to do. I think it had nothing to do with COVID. I never saw COVID going out and lock nobody up. Meantime, Dame said Bahamians need to celebrate the fact that crime continues to trend downward. We should be celebrating the fact that, that overall crime is down 16% over last year. All right. And, the, and last year was down over the year before. All right. We should be celebrating the fact that homicide is down in double digits. These are significant numbers, more than 20 percent. We should be celebrating the fact that armed robberies are down almost half. All right. Dame says as far as he is concerned, until there is evidence that says otherwise, it's a non-argument in his book. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. There's more news coming up, but first your RF Market Watch. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. Still to come, boots on the ground in the Camp Road community and a Bahamian baseball player joins the St. Louis Cardinals. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. Boots on the ground today as police officers visited Camp Road to forge stronger ties with the community. Some residents applauded the move, but others charged that police must be consistent in order for their plan to work. Jillian Gray has that. Dozens of officers canvassed the Camp Road community today in an effort to build stronger ties with residents. However, resident Talonius Sands believes that in order for them to build that relationship, they'll have to come around for more than just a few minutes every blue moon. I don't see any real 
real significance in them just doing this once every blue moon. I mean, if they were to continue this every so often, the bad boys would probably <laughs> disappear. 71-year-old Cyril Stubbs agreed that the walkabouts are helping. As he says, criminals run when they see officers patrolling. Good job. This will keep them fair. When they want to do foolish and stupid, they think twice and all of that. The police ain't far. And that works with the police and all that like that. So the hell I ain't care what they say or what they do. Yeah, okay? The police presence today allowed residents to share some of these concerns. But this resident says officers' response time to calls is often slow. Well, I think the response time when, when, it, when police are called are really not good at all. I mean, people, people call the police and sometimes they don't even show up. I believe that police response time and that's a police station what right here about maybe 200 400 yards down the road and they don't show up say they don't have a car so i don't even know what their internal problems are but for us um stuff like that you know domestic um situations happen it's a challenge that acp theophilus cunningham said is already being addressed in some cases we're guilty of that right because of the volume of matters that we have to deal with in some cases but for most of the most time the police is always on time Quick responses is one of our priorities. The plan, he said, is to build strong relationships with residents and establish crime prevention groups. We believe if we police them by consent and not by force, this partnership could only grow from strength to strength, time after time again. Now, officers say they will continue to work with urban renewal as well as neighborhood watches to ensure that they stomp out crime before it happens. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. Thanks, Jillian. Tonight in sports, another Bahamian athlete joins the ranks of professional baseball players in the country. Marcellus Hall has the details. All right, thanks a lot. Welcome to our sports on a Tuesday, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall, another young Bahamian inking his name to professional baseball contract. His name, Adari Grant. Let's take a look at the details. Another Bahamian baseball player headed to the professional ranks as Adari Grant signing yesterday to become a member of the St. Louis Cardinals organization. Grant, a member of the I Elite Academy family, making the announcement in Grand Bahama. The newest pro talked about staying committed to continuing to work hard. I don't, I don't even know how to express it. It is very, it's surreal. I feel excitement. Also, I feel anxious to start my professional career and I know I'm going to make everyone proud and represent the Bahamas very well. Although I signed, nothing ever changed. The same, keep the same underdog um, attitude, same work ethic, go out of the 24-7, never let up. Nothing changes. how it always is and how it always will be. Don't, it can't become a norm. You see how we go wrong. You got to stay hard and stay committed. And also, if I stay committed, I know I'll make it and make everyone proud. Grant's mother, Philcia Grant, proud of her son's accomplishment and giving credit to those who helped along the way. Adari loves to harp on me because I am the only non-athletic person in a very athletic family. See, but he doesn't understand, right, the sacrifices that a mother will make. Because I could have been selfish and I could have kept my baseball abilities for myself. But I stored them to pass them on to him so that we can all be here today. So you're welcome, Adari. I said if Adari told me that he wanted to be Superman, I would find the best superhero academy and I would enroll him because that's what we're going to do. We're not going to limit children. We're not going to look at them and tell them at 12 that what they want is too big. Because you know what we do? We condemn them to a life of being small, of being limited. And I, I want to say it's thank you to the support of everyone in this room. And those that couldn't be here, Christy Sands and her family, I have to mention them, that we are here today. Meanwhile, to the NBA, where DeAndre Ayton and the Suns back on the floor last night, taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. Ayton, 34 minutes on the floor. He would finish with 18 points, 16 rebounds, and three assists. It would, though, come in the losing cause as the Grizzlies get the win, 108-104. to Suns now 7-5, fourth in the West, with a game on Wednesday against the Rockets. And that's a look at your sports here on this Tuesday. Much more to come as the week progresses. Meanwhile, I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you. After the break, a student gives her five cents on financial literacy. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic.
Welcome back to our news. Beautiful but cool conditions ahead. Here's Greg back in the weather studio. Thanks again, Christina. In our second look at weather, we take a look at our satellite view around the area. High pressure remains in charge across the northwest and central Bahamas as the frontal boundary extending across the southeast Bahamas continues to linger across the area. Some clouds and some isolated showers associated with that system. Frontal boundary will get in here sometime by Thursday and yet another one expected by Saturday into Sunday. So a string of nice pleasant weather for the next couple of days expected. Your boating forecast for all areas tonight through tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the northeast to east 15 to 20 knots. Sea is running 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. Tide is presently high. Will be low at 12.54 tomorrow morning. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through Sunday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe night, everyone. Christina? Thanks, Greg. As the Bahamas navigates its way through economic recovery in the midst of the pandemic, the Central Bank of the Bahamas has made financial literacy part of its near and medium term goals. Now students are take talking dollars and cents through a competition encouraging students to get money smart Bahamas. Our news caught up with the winner of the primary school competition who gave us her five cents. Everybody should have a chance to deal with their money and save their money in many different ways. The St. John's College student took a deep dive into financial literacy with her family to get a better sense of how to save and spend money. It began when she asked her parents to purchase her a beautiful baby doll. My dad looks at me and says, I'm not sure, so sure about this, especially during such a rough time in this world. I get it. Then he said something about financial literacy and understanding money at age nine. I wonder if that even applies to me. What Tiana discovered was that it did apply to her and other students her age. Central Bank Governor John Roll recently revealed that the bank is working to strengthen understanding of how financial services and the economy works, ultimately empowering Bahamians to ask the right questions and make better decisions. I am learning from my dad that you tell money what to do. My daddy told me when he was younger, his money was flying out the window. I don't know what that means, but it sounds dangerous. For Tiana, that first step meant setting her priorities. The most important thing that I save, that I put just to save my money on was my ties, so I can give back to God. So did she ever get the doll she was saving up for? The doll I got actually for my birthday, so I did get those things but the knowledge she gained was worth the process. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.